You know, I'm often quoted as saying in this job that I have that I shouldn't be surprised when I get surprised because stuff comes up all the time that I don't expect or anticipate and I have to work with Karen and others to play our way through it. But for me, that means some issue of some kind coming across my desk, a phone call, a meeting with a message I wasn't expecting, somebody in a constituent gathering who raises an issue I didn't know about, Boston gets selected for the 2024 Olympics. And those are certainly words that I believe apply equally to the folks in the law enforcement community. Assistant Secretary Quilly talked about it. The Lieutenant Governor did as well. You never know what's going to happen when you show up for work. But for you and your colleagues, there's a big difference between not knowing what happens when you show up for work and not knowing what happens when most of the rest of the world shows up for work. A few months ago, I was out doing errands on a Saturday morning. I had the radio on, and there was a news report about a Boston police officer who'd been shot in the face at what was supposed to be an investigatory car stop in Boston. So I picked up my phone and I called the commissioner, Commissioner Evans, and I said, tell me what happened. By the way, he answered the phone, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> and he answered the phone, and he told me what happened to Officer Moynihan. And I said, geez, my wife and I are going to be in Boston later going to some events. Is it okay if we swing by the hospital and see how he's doing? And he said, I don't know. We'll have to see how he is doing. Let me call you back on that. And thankfully and luckily, he called me back a few hours later and said, actually, he's doing better than anybody would have expected. He's a really lucky guy. Now think about that. Shot in the face at point-blank range, and he's a really lucky guy. So my wife and I swung by Boston Medical Center and went in to visit Officer Moynihan, but we had to walk past a phalanx of about 50 police officers, Boston PD, to get there and through a room in which every member of his direct and extended family was gathered. We had a chance to talk very briefly with him. We came back the next day and talked to him some more. And all he could talk about was the unbelievable work that the EMTs did to save his life and how much he couldn't wait to get back to work sitting there with a scar that went from here to here, across the back of his head, a hole in his face that you could see, and a palsy because of the nerve damage that was done that affected his ability to speak. Yeah, God bless those EMTs, and boy, I can't wait to get back to work. And when we left, I remember my wife and I in the ride home talking about it and thinking to ourselves and saying to each other, the men and women who wear this uniform are very special. And many times misrepresented and misunderstood. And that's why events like this are so important. Because they remind us all of what happens virtually all the time 
when men and women get up and go to work every day in law enforcement and not knowing what to expect. They do it because they love the work. They do it because they love their colleagues. And they do it because they know it's important and it matters. The side of most police cars says protect and serve. In this day and age, that's an enormously complicated equation. And the men and the women of this great state who accept that challenge every day, not knowing every day what it will translate into and what it will mean are among the greatest heroes among us. Now to Deb and Kim, I have three kids. They're 24, 21, and 18. Two boys and a girl. For my wife and me, there's simply been no greater joy in life than watching them grow up. Nothing compares. Every time a police officer makes a routine traffic stop, every time a police officer responds to a call, every time a police officer does their job, they put that greatest joy at risk. Should never forget that. And especially on a day like this, when we have a chance to honor the supreme sacrifice that Trooper Hannah made and what he lost and what they lost, we should take a moment and remember that. And to those of you who are here today to be recognized and honored for your work, bravo, and God bless. But I'm pretty sure if I was sitting in a bar with any one of you, which I never will be, <laughs> drinking a beer, which I never will be, and I asked you about this, you would say to me what I've heard your colleagues say many times, and fellow officers say many times before, this is nothing, I was just doing my job. Well, may the good Lord watch your back, all of you, and all those men and women who carry the torch and wear the uniform. Thank you.